from the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, where I promise I won't make you get a vaccine, but I will politely ask you to sign up for my free email newsletter. Let's take another look back at the week that was. Among the many people being threatened by President Biden with termination if they don't get vaccinated is our already overworked and undermanned Border Patrol. Though it might be prudent for Border Patrol agents to get vaccinated, considering the staggering number of COVID-infected illegal immigrants that Biden is allowing to flood our southern border. Just how much has illegal immigration exploded under President Biden? And just how much does it threaten to alter the very fabric of America? Well, during fiscal year 2021 alone, we're on track to have so many illegal immigrants enter America that their total number will be greater than the entire population of 11 U.S. states. Now, 26 Republican governors are demanding a meeting with President Biden to discuss this absolute disaster, writing in an open letter to the president, and I quote, the months long surge in illegal crossings has instigated an international humanitarian crisis, spurred a spike in international criminal activity and opened the floodgates to human traffickers and drug smugglers endangering public health and safety in our states. A crisis that began at our southern border now extends beyond to every state and requires immediate action before the situation worsens." End quote. Well, here's how the White House responded to that. There are a lot of Republicans out there giving speeches about how outraged they are about the situation at the border. Not many who are putting forward uh, solutions or steps that we could take. So we're a little tired of the speeches. Oh, so you're tired of speeches, Jen? How about the rest of America? Tired of the wide open border? And you're, who, us, gaslighting? as you allow thousands upon thousands of unvetted illegal immigrants to pour into our country? And how about this absolute joke of a Homeland Security director, Alejandro Mayorkas, who said that the border is closed, but at the same time acknowledges at least 12,000 or 15,000 Haitian immigrants have been released into the interior of the United States. And that's just in the last few weeks. We don't have a border, Jen. And you know it, despite your sanctimonious condescending tone and the snippy comebacks at the few reporters who dare to call you out on it. You know who else thinks this situation is unsustainable, Jen? How about your boss's former boss, Barack Obama, who said exactly that in a heavily edited interview with ABC News this week. Here's the quote, which was only included in the online transcript, and I quote, we're a nation state. We have borders. The idea that we can just have open borders is something that, as a practical matter, is unsustainable." End quote. Words of Barack Obama. So quit lecturing us. We'll believe our lying eyes before we'll believe your spin. Let's go on to the Twitterverse. And boy, do I apologize in advance for this one. But this probably got more eyeballs there on Twitter than it did where it actually aired on CBS. Vaccine. Man, I've seen better comedy on the Weather Channel and more subtle propaganda out of North Korea. Good heavens. Wow. Next up. How about a shout out to Dog the Bounty Hunter, who is doing better work, it seems, than the FBI. This week I tweeted this, quote, it's time for Chris Ray to step aside and turn the FBI over to the dogs. Now, if you haven't been following the Brian Laundry manhunt, Dog the Bounty Hunter, a reality TV star, has been doing some pretty good work chasing down leads in the case of the Gabby Petito murder and her former fiance, who's been on the run for weeks. Now he's considered a person of interest in Gabby's death. May Gabby rest in peace, and may the FBI get something done for a change. More from the Twitterverse, MSNBC host Chris Hayes tweeted psychotically, there is no brutal fiscal reality that the nation faces. It is entirely made up. John Cordillo responded, quote, he clearly doesn't buy gasoline, groceries, or lumber. 
Well, he does work for MSNBC. He clearly doesn't buy lumber. <laughs> Maybe some gluten-free chips and some soy milk. That'd be about it. Finally, let me point you to a great column from Kurt Schlichter, who's been on our television show at TBN. Kurt wrote this week on a very important lesson for Republicans. No matter what a GOP candidate believes, the Democrats and the media will always portray him or her or whatever other gender you want to make up as literally Hitler. See, the worst any Republican can do in response is compromising principles to try to win their favor. It's like throwing raw meat into shark-infested waters. Kurt's advice is the same I've been giving for years. Stick to your principles. Be true to yourself. And when they launch ridiculous, slanderous attacks on you, laugh at them. Leftists have no sense of humor. I mean none. And certainly not about themselves. So mocking them, man, that's their kryptonite. And if you're scared of the Twitter mob saying bad things about you, Remember these two words, who cares? Roughly 90% of all the tweets are generated by about 5% of Twitter users, and most of them are far to the left of the majority of Americans. Plus, having a social media account, that doesn't mean your opinion carries any particular weight. Twitter and Facebook ban the president, but they allow anyone else with an internet connection to have an account and a megaphone for free. So if talk is cheap, how much is that talk actually worth? And until next time, these have been the facts of the matter. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, then subscribe, and hit the notification bell below. Now, if you didn't like it, you ought to find a Ben Shapiro video to detox you with more facts. <laughs>